If you want to follow Christ, the big fish, learn to drown. Not just surrender a little. That means to let the water take care of you. But this is a deeper step. It is allowing the water to drown us, to kill us. To breathe under the water means to breathe death. It means to live in an alternative way of life. It is a new mode of surviving, breathing water instead of air. Now death is the mode of survival, drown. This is the baptismal imperative. There must come within us a dispossession of the self. The extraordinary experience of dying must become the ordinary experience of living. The quote just read was certainly a way into understanding St. Paul, who says that when you were baptized, you, you were buried with Christ and you were buried into his death. And I really do think that this buried into the death of Christ is the buried into dying to what Jesus says, if you want to find yourself, you've got to lose yourself. It's, that, it's the self you've got to lose that dies. And the self you've got to lose that dies ain't the self that you think you are when you think of who you think you are. <laughs> that's, the, that's simply the conscious egoic self, the ego self that we have. But when Phil becomes aware that he's aware, he's aware there's something else besides the ego self in Phil. He realizes there's something else. He becomes consciously conscious. And I, I think that what that passage is suggesting is that that is really a transformation of consciousness. It's actually a new state of being conscious. You're no longer conscious simply from this egoic, egocentric place. Consciousness expands and you find that you're conscious now of something, of you're conscious that I am more than simply my thoughts. I am more than my memories. I am more than my history. I am something, there's something else going on in consciousness than simply what I thought was going on or what I wasn't paying attention to what was happening. Something else is happening here. Right? That's why I get this. So I think this is the mystical death that that passage was speaking of, the mystical death, to the point where Paul says, it's no longer I who live, but Christ who lives. And if Christ is living in me, then who's living? Huh. Because then, if Christ is living in me, who's living, then who dies? Because maybe what I think survives after death is simply, this, is simply the self that's got to die before I die. <laughs> so that when I die, there's not much left of this who I think I am dying, and it is Christ then who lives. The great Christ, the, the godly Christ, the, the, Christ who is the, the Christ who is the Trinitarian, the Son of God, the Christ who is the godly, the godly communion. The Greeks call it the perichoesis, the dance, the dancing God that Nietzsche could only believe in, you know, the dancing God. But, this is, but it's, it's a healing death. It's the dying death. It's the spiritual death. It's the mystical death. It's the psychological death. So that we then can live as if we were dead. And that's really living. I mean, Heidegger says this, you know, that we're beings unto death. And that authentic human living is when we acknowledge that there is a mortal death coil that we're part of. We are. But then there is this other dimension to all of this, which is identity with the beloved. Not just, not just communion, but you become one with the beloved, and there's no longer I and you. There's just I. So that God becomes the I of my I. This is experiential. And see, this is the reality of interiority. This is not simply a matter of memorizing catechism books or ritual activities. It's not simply knowing the words. 
it's, uh, it's, it's, it's engaging in the human experience of life with all of its vulnerability. Being willing then, and this is the alternative life. The alternative life then, as I re-enter into the relationships, into the love relationships, profound, vulnerable relations with the, where, where people are, uh, lay themselves bare in front of another, the, the, the experiences of sickness and mortality, the struggles of being betrayed, the human experiences of, of being betrayed or of, of, of not knowing where one is, like so many of these young people, on the verge of suicide because of the meaninglessness of things, the, lonely, the loneliness that's now pandemic. Um, many writers are wanting to tackle that today. Ken Wilber, certainly, I'm reading the book now, The Future of Religion. And what he's doing is wanting to say, you know, we're living in a world where the transcendent element of, the, of life is being quickly desiccated by the, uh, by the distractions of this, he calls it, the, in another book, the Atman Project, you know. It's being desiccated. And, and so he says that there are, he says that, and I agree, that the, the process of this kind of dispossession as, 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 as many pronged. And first is that desire, or that curiosity, the eros, the eros that somehow there is more to me than what I think I'm already thinking I am. You know, a, a conscious consciousness than a critical consciousness, a cosmic critical conscious consciousness, uh, you know, a, you know, cosmic, the transcendent. When consciousness expands into this Christ consciousness, you transcend the egoic. Even if this is just a function of the brain, this is part of the, the dilemma these students at, at DePaul face, even if this is simply the potential of the human organism and the neurons firing, that create this sensibility of something greater than simply the egoic consciousness, even if that's that only. And personally, I, 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 I tend not to believe that that's the case. I tend to believe that something else is functioning here. And this is where traditional Roman Catholic theology is, 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 you know, waxes eloquently, that the human is a, is, is the, is a, is a body-soul communion a communion of the material and the spiritual. And so, yes, there is the way in which the body and the soul are intermeshed, and yet can you distinguish them as we do our neurological studies of brain chemistry and, and, and all of that? That's, that's a real good question for me. But I think one of the ways in which we come to that place of dispossession is A, one, is through a, a practice, a practice that will alter consciousness itself. And there's, there's nothing that parallels the question of silence and the question of the, of the, of the meditation or the contemplative practices. Across the board, there's nothing that we have as humans, as simple as watching the breath, as simple as the Jesus prayer, as simple as simply allowing ourselves to sit in silence and watch the thoughts pass. It has to be a practice. So I teach the students at DePaul, we, we actually do a practice of that. That's one. Another one is that once you do that, you realize that there is more to consciousness than just that which is transcending consciousness. There's also subconsciousness that's got to get cleaned up. And so a second part, B, for me would be some serious devo uh, commitment to self-analysis, the, the, the unconscious, the subconscious stuff. Sweeping that up. So I personally find myself being relishing the time that I spend in an analysis. I work with a Jungian anal analyst right now. And it was the first time I've ever done it for the past three years now. That's the first time. His question was, why did it take so long? Because <laughs> I thought I was quite sufficient doing it myself, but you can't. Because that's the third. 
The third one, you can't do this alone. Uh, this is a communal activity. This is something, and Jesus in the Gospel on Sunday will say, where two or three are gathered in my name, there am I in their midst. You need, this is a relational thing. It's done in relationality. And this is, this is unfortunate because when egoic consciousnesses relate, there's not really relationality. There's simply some form of, of you know, of locution, I suppose, speaking, but no vulnerable intimacies. And that's it. It's ultimately intimacy with... <laughs> you become intimate with yourself. <laughs>